Alec, good to be back here today at Star GB. You guys are always bringing new machines to the market. This is no different. We're looking here at the Star SR 32J2 Type A machine. I know there's a Type B as well, but what, what's different with the new SR 32J2 to start with? This machine is packed with changes, to be honest. We've got more RPM on all the spindles. We've got more power on all the spindles. The machine is more accurate. Uh, so there's lots of enhancements on this uh, next model. What, when, when we talk about the power, are you talking about the power in the main spindle and the, and the second spindle, the sub-spindle, or on the driven tools or collectively? All four spindles have had a power increase. Uh, on the main and sub, it's gone up by approximately 40%. On the driven tool, on the main side, it's gone up again 40-45%. And on the back working tools, it's gone up by 25%. So there's significant increases. And what's that power going to deliver for an end user then? Basically, uh, more metal cutting capability, basically. And when you're doing that then, have you, in, have you increased the weight of the machine at all in, in order to handle that? Exactly. The structure's changed. We've gone from linear ways to dovetail slides on uh, Y1 and Z2 now. Uh, the whole base casting has increased in size. The webbing that's used on the base casting has gone from 20mm to 25mm, so it's a lot stronger much more rigid piece of equipment. I should have mentioned at the start of this though, this is a 32mm sliding head lathe, a 32mm bar. You can go bigger than that, can't you? With um... For sure, we've got a kit that we often sell that takes it up to 35. Now the idea with the sliding head lathe is, is, is for production, is to make those components faster. A lot of that comes down to how the tools are laid out, the configuration of those tools. What's the differences here with this model as well, with the, with the tooling layout? The drilling arm has gone from four to five stations. On the back work in the Type A has gone from four to six. The Type B goes from four to eight. As well as that, we're now using ER20 spindles on the cross working instead of ER16, so we can get big, bigger lumps of carbide in the machine to work with that extra power that we've got. So on the Type B model, you've got a Y axis here. Yeah, Y2 on, axis, yeah. You, you've got eight driven tools, but you've got a Y axis on the yes. Type B as well, but no Y axis on Type A. No. Did you have a Y-axis on the previous SR? We didn't, not on the back working, no. We had four fixed spindles. So, so what is that Y-axis actually going to give for an end user? It's more tooling stations, obviously, uh, which will enable us to make more complicated parts. It's as simple as that. And is that how you at, at StarGB see the market going these days with more complicated components? I, I get the fact that you've added power to the machine because that means you can, you can make parts faster. But if you've got more axes, you can, you can do that as well, can't you? Yeah, with more tooling configurations, with more axes, we can make more complex parts. And I think it's fair to say that we've seen the general trend over the last, you know, four, five, six years. The parts are getting that more, a little bit more intricate. So, you know, this is a sort of our medium complexity model, but we can do some really, really clever uh, components. We, we spoke about the power of the spindles. I also note here about the, the, the speed of them as well. I mean, you've got 8,000 RPM on the subspindle and 8,000 on the main as well. Is that changed? It, that's gone up from 7,000, but also on the cross working station, we've gone uh, from 5,000 RPM, but we've now split it. So we've got 6,000 RPM on the top three fixed spindles and 8,000 on the bottom two for modular cartridge type units. So before, if you'd have wanted to go beyond the 6,000, you would have had to get some kind of speed increase or onto the machine. Uh, speed, power, covered, fine. Accuracy, T tell us a little bit about that on this new machine. For sure, the, the, the J2 model has obviously got a different base, uh, so it's a lot more casting that's been built into the base. The webbing's increased, like I say, from uh, 20 to 25 mil. Inside the cutter room as well, there's a lot more internal covers that are protecting that base from the hot oil, so thermally, it's a lot more stable machine tool. Software, that was another area as well you mentioned to me earlier. Give our viewers a, a, an idea of some of the... We've got more memory in this particular control. We've got some extra features. For example, tool life management has been enhanced so we can um, calculate tool life by part count now as well as cutting time. So that's a new feature. So there's quite a few changes on the, on the CNC side as well. So with the sliding head lathe, we often look at these machines and they're guide bush machines. So what else is different with this model? This particular model goes guide bush to non guide bush, like lots of new stars these days. We've got that flexibility to swap between the two modes. Uh, another big difference is that we've gone from pneumatic clamping to hydraulic clamping on the main and the sub spindle. That gives us 40% extra clamping force to deal with all that extra power that we can put into the component. 
So exciting to hear about all the developments and the changes to, to this model. Just give us then an overall summary, in your opinion, as an engineer investing in this technology, what it's going to do for their business. Biggest benefit for this particular model is the extra metal cutting capability. Okay, it's not the most complex of machine tools in terms of our range, but it offers enough uh, tooling configurations to suit an awful lot of our customer base and that's why the SR32J has been such a popular model over the years for us and this is going to be a continuation of that so customers are going to get like I say more power more speed more tooling configurations more accuracy a lot more machine tool for their money and, and with those tooling configurations if you've got tools from an older machine are they able to be They're transferred compatible. Completely, completely compatible so it's all about its precision productivity power Absolutely. And performance. Brilliant. This machine's got it all. Thank you, Alec. You're welcome.